Hi there, in today's tutorial we'll guide you through how to use the PCG Layered Biomes plugin. Let's get started. The first step is to prepare everything for generation. First, we need to create a PCG volume and place it somewhere on the landscape. The next step is to add a Biome Spawn Manager component to the created actor and assign PCG Biomes or main graph to the PCG component. Then you need to create two data assets to store the settings. The first, Biome Settings, will contain Biome Parameters, and the second, PCG Spawn Preset, will contain sets of objects for generation. Make sure to assign them. Next, open both assets and create the first biome, which will be a coniferous forest. To do this, make a list of trees in the Spawn Preset and proceed to create the biome. Name it Forest and create a generic layer. Specify the spawn set we created earlier and choose the corresponding generic graph for this layer type. Ideally, trees should already appear, but the first time you need to manually trigger Generate. And now we have trees! Although this doesn't quite resemble a forest, now let's make sure the coniferous forest starts only at a certain elevation. So, add a height filter and set approximate values. Nothing changed which means the PCG is not responding to changes in the files. I'm not sure why this happens, but to fix it, open the main graph and press Force Refresh. This is only needed the first time you launch the editor. Now let's adjust the filter values. Next, let's create another biome to cover the remaining area. Each layer has a special debugging mode that allows you to visualize the boundaries of biomes. You can change the fill color if desired. Now let's move on to setting up the tree layer. Let's decrease the density since we don't need such a high density of trees. Also, trees shouldn't grow at such an angle, so let's enable absolute rotation to fix this. Now they all grow vertically, but this shouldn't happen on such gentle slopes. So, let's enable slope filtering and slightly increase the acceptable slope. Let's go through all the parameters of the layer. Density allows you to decrease the density of objects. Seed allows you to randomize all random parameters except for noise. Noise allows you to remove part of the objects according to a specific distribution. Scale affects the frequency of noise. The higher the scale, the higher the frequency. We can enable noise visualization for a better understanding through the custom debugging mode for generic graph. Now you can see the noise values, and we can choose the values in which we want to generate objects. Noise Seed allows you to randomize the noise distribution. We have already used no slopes and absolute rotation. Offset Z sets the vertical offset. Transform Range sets the range of random horizontal offset. We won't see the real effect on the trees. I'll show it later. Scale Min and Scale Max set the scale of objects on all axes at once. We'll see the last graph in action later. Now let's create another layer for the saplings and make them grow where the trees are and a little beyond their boundaries. For this, set meshes for saplings in a new set. And then it would be better to copy the previous layer and assign the created set to it. Nothing appeared because they are trying to appear exactly in the same places where there are already trees. We can see them if we turn off the previous tree layer. So let's adjust the settings a bit, increase the density, and increase the acceptable noise values. Make the noise slightly less frequent in both layers and adjust the parameters to improve the appearance. Now the saplings are competing with the trees for space. You can easily see this by enabling the display of points where they are trying to generate. As you can see, they match exactly with the locations where the trees are currently standing. So let's change the seed to randomize the positions of trees. However, you may notice that some points do not intersect with trees, but still do not contain saplings, and here's why. Avoid regions 
are areas where the layer is forbidden to create objects. Right now, there are trees from the previous layer with boundaries that are too large. So we need to adjust the out exclusion settings for the trees. It's already set to 50% of mesh bounds, but for trees, 0.1 will work much better. Now, let's return to the saplings. As you can see, they haven't appeared everywhere they should, and this is because their in-exclusion settings are not suitable. So let's replace points with mesh bounds and decrease the scale. As you can see, the saplings are now generating correctly among the trees. However, let's immediately adjust the out-exclusion for the saplings so that we don't have to revisit this. This will be important for the upcoming layers. Now, just as before, let's create another layer for large rocks. There's nothing new here, so we'll skip the details. As you can see, the large rocks have no chance of appearing in the forest. Oh! Hmm. That's unusual. Why is that? Clearly there's something wrong with in-exclusion. Yeah, here it is set to points, but mesh bounds will work much better. So, there are no rocks in the forest because there's no space left for them. To fix this, let's change the order of the layers because this is where it really matters. And now we have rocks among the trees! Next, we'll fill the field biome with deciduous trees. Specifically, we'll create the same two layers as before. One with trees, and one with saplings. There's nothing new here, so we'll skip the details. And let's adjust the same issue with layer intersection by modifying in and out exclusion of layers. So, I don't really like these dry saplings, and I want them to appear much less frequently. To do this, in the spawn object settings, you need to decrease their weight, but since it's already set to one, you should increase the weight of the others. Hmm, nothing changed. Sometimes the system doesn't recognize changes in the spawn presets, and I haven't figured out why yet. The simplest solution in such cases is to change the seed. Dry saplings still appear quite often. Let's lower the priority some more. Well, that's better. All right, now let's create a road. We'll adjust the PCG volume a bit for better visibility. Next, we need to create an edit layer for the splines and the required paint layer. Now, let's lay down the road across the plane. We'll also assign the previously created layer to the spline. As you can see, trees are growing right on the road. To fix this, we'll create a new biome for the road and add a filter for the landscape layer. Lastly, will change the priority of the road biome. A point can belong to only one biome, so the point will be assigned the biome with the lowest priority among all the suitable ones. We'll set a negative priority for the road to ensure there's no spawn on top of the splines. Let's say we want to scatter stones along the roadside. To do this, we'll create a special edge layer, make a new set with stones, and specify it in the layer. We'll choose a special edge graph for the graph, now, let's increase the generation area so the stones appear and adjust the generation parameters. We'll increase the noise scale to avoid large empty gaps, and also raise the noise filter high so fewer stones are filtered out. With these stones, it'll be easy to see the purpose of the transform range parameter. As you can see, without it, the stones lie in a straight line. With it, there's some scattering, which gives a more natural appearance. As you can see, these stones are rendered from any distance. This is fine for filming videos, but for games, it's too resource intensive. To change this, we need to create our own spawner graph. Here's what the default one looks like. All it does is set a template for creating meshes. To make changes to them, you need to create your own graph with the desired parameters. 
The easiest way is to copy the default one and set the necessary parameters. Let's set the cool distance from 10,000 to 20,000 and assign this graph to the layer with the stones. Now, as you can notice, they aren't rendered from a great distance. That's all. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your creations.